you guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is a massive game and it's called Over Battle The All War. It's by Scyther Gaming and it's for two to four players but it could have more or less depending on the Kickstarter or how it looks like. I'm not sure but as far as what I have there's four. And the four characters you can play as are the Sin, the Tara Brights, this is the Sin here, this is the Tara Brights. You have the Materians which are these guys and then the Glacians I think is what they're called. This is a war game in which you're going to be playing uh, in space. You're going to have different types of units such as like scouts and mechs and then you're gonna have bombers and other kinds of things that fly around the uh, world. You're gonna start with either a moon and a planet or a moon depending on the character you choose. There's one unique character which is the uh, Sin over here, this guy here. He is actually basically a refugee or his whole entire race is refugees and they're basically gonna be working with you in this war game if this character is chosen until a certain point in the game where they become at war with you so they kind of build and build. There's an entire story that is attached to this game and it also pays heed or acknowledges the old classic style war games. It's going to have this 3D thing here that shows you how you can battle. It also will have this table topper which is going to have a battle um, situation on it where you can move up and down based on how you're fighting and whatnot. The each character or each race is going to have a ton of different units and you'll be building your army based on a point system at the beginning of the game as well as at the end of every round the beginning you'll be also put, put, choosing units to uh, place into your different areas that you control thusly accumulating more points and more victory points all that good stuff throughout the entire game. There is going to be a little player boards here which you're going to utilize uh, that are going to have the uh, expenses and all that on the back and it tells you your specific units and specific combat specifications as well and of course there's this whole placement of the thing that happens at the very beginning this is a very thick game has a lot of stuff to it but it's not overly complex actually which is why i'm going to show you down below once we finish this up uh, everything that's in the game then i'll go and give you an overview I'll sh i probably won't be doing turns because this game has a long lengthy aspect as far as far as turns go but I'll give you an idea of how it functions and then we'll come up and we'll do a review so let's go down uh, and show you everything involved in this game all the components uh, everything you can get in over battle the all war by Scyther gaming I think you'll be pretty impressed so here we have over battle the all war and everything included and as you can see this thing is huge before we start going on this is like this table topper thing so if you have one of those table topper tables this is actually gonna be the exact size you would need to place it on if I said that wrong I'll put it down below and you can go ahead and uh, check it out and see what it's for but uh anyway this is the game there's a lot of stuff going on it's a war game it's massive it has different colors and all that kind of stuff but let's go ahead and show you what we got here so we have a tiered battle system here on the side of the board over here is going to be a normal battle system and of course i have mats as well uh, which you can put together depending on uh, how big the game is going to be this is a rather large one this plays up to four players here and uh, as you can see i already have one of the factions out in the game there's certain phases. The first phase is going to be the uh, setup phase in which you're going to be having players roll for initiative and if you're playing with the sin player depending on the number of players he's always going to get last on initiative. Uh, when you're playing two players it's a one versus one. When you're playing three you can do one versus one versus one or one v one and then the sin and finally the sin is always included in a four player game. The beginning like I said you roll for your initiative and then after that you're going to be selecting a planet and a moon. After you select a planet and a moon the sin player will go ahead and select uh, his moon I believe. And then after that, if not, it's the next phase. After that, you're going to go ahead and roll again, and you're going to get planet and a moon as well. There's two types of uh, planets. There's the standard planets, and then there's the uh, larger planets. You're always going to have a... The first planet you choose is always going to be your home world, and uh, the larger ones are just going to be ones you're going to be placing on the map to make the map have more presence, more different planets, and whatnot. The Sin player will have that one moon that's actually going to be his little home world. Otherwise, everybody's going to have a standard planet as their home world. Uh, after that, and I've got to watch and make sure I'm doing all this right here you're then going to uh, be able to place you're going to be rolling for initiative as well placing down certain things as well as everybody's going to get two of these asteroid thingamajiggers and uh, you're going to be placing down around the, the world basically however you would like to do so after everybody places that same player will also get to place down his planet and then everybody's going to be able to place their uh, starting units these little boards here you're going to get these little like hidden screens are going to give you a basic starting units most characters are going to get the same starting units except for the sin they'll be getting something different they'll be getting two commanders uh, five infantry a transport and a shipyard and the reason they get a shipyard is because they're only able to build smaller things because they're basically like refugees uh, 
everybody else will get their basic starting units and they'll place it on their home world. And uh, after that, everyone will then get a certain amount of points. Uh, I believe it's about 200 points for the larger the, the ships, like the spaceships and whatnot. And then for the infantry, it's 150. And after that, you're going to then um, start placing around the board five at a time. Now, the starting units for the Sin is interesting as well. He's going to get one of his characters here, along with uh, his shipyard here that goes around this area here. There's some rules as far as placing planets goes. You have to have your moon connected to a planet. Uh, you can't be attaching certain pieces and whatnot. And the board actually kind of shows you how, it, how it's supposed to function, just on the little uh, graph-like areas here. Everybody, play, everybody has, has their starting planets, but also uh, the Sin player is going to get to place one of their units in each of the player's home worlds as well because they're with you. They're, they're working with you, at least for the time being, right? And uh, everybody's going to be placing five units at a time. And on this little board here is nice. It's going to tell you the cost of the unit, which is right here in green, and uh, how, whether you can buy it or not. So for instance, the Sin only has a shipyard, and shipyards say they're orange. The space stations say they, they are purple. And so you can pick up units based on the colors you have. Gray is going to be the infantry style units. Those are the ones that you can go ahead and place on your planets. Otherwise, you're gonna be feeling free to place on any any territories you want, other than players home worlds, and of course the Sin moon home world. Uh, the only rule is you can only have half of a planet in control. You can only take half of the spaces on a planet, more, no more than that for just the starting aspect of the game. Once everybody has placed, you're going to do something called the conflict, in which if players uh, want to resolve anything because they can place in the same space as another player, you can choose to do combat, or you can or one of the players can choose to run away. Then you're going to go ahead and roll for initiative again, and players will take turns. Uh, taking turns is pretty simple. The first thing you're going to be doing is moving uh, your units around the board here, trying to acquire, new, uh, trying to choosing uh, combat first. You're going to be like, I'm going to attack here, I'm going to attack here, I'm going to attack here. After that, the Sin player, when, after he knows where you're going to be attacking, the Sin player will then go ahead and start moving his units around uh, your board, utilizing these little tokens of, of their color to gain points, because points are important. They're what's going to give you more units during the recruitment phase after the turn. And the Sin player kind of co cooperatively, so to speak, works with you while you're taking your turn. And that Sin player can actually is actually forced to fight with you when you're in uh, a group with them. So if they, for instance, if I had a Sin player here with me and I'm blue, that player will fight with me if somebody tries to invade. But Sins, uh, generally speaking, are going to be switching back and forth depending on who is the victor in the battle. So the Sin will never actually die until war starts. They're always working together up until the point where either the end of game triggers or the fourth, fifth, or sixth round happens and they get opened and they're like okay now we're ready to fight nevertheless after you choose your combat and the sin players place um can place their spaces around moving their characters around based on their movement uh changing uh how many points they can get on on the turn players will then be able to um do non-combat movements they're going to be able to go around and select spaces on the board that are uh, unoccup or unoccupied by other things so for instance maybe i have one of these ships here he has a certain movement and it tells you on this board this tells you everything you need to know it's going to tell you the cost it's going to tell you the defensive attack the, the defense you need to roll the attack you need to roll tell you how many spaces it can move and then whether it can move in space or on the ground there's a couple other rules as far as how ship goes some of these small ones will actually cloak each other and whatnot but you'll be able to move them for non-combat and then you're going to tally up your score. So for instance here, if we look at the blue character, he has actually all control of this and all control of this. So he'd get uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, so on and so forth. Okay, 100 points. And then he can go ahead, while the next player is taking their turn, he's gonna write down his points, he's gonna start collecting units, and then he's gonna go ahead and place them down. And then the next player is going to be doing that at the same time while he's doing that. And you're going to be just doing an all-out war game. People are going to be moving around different spaces and whatnot, dealing with each other. Uh, after, I think, the third round, it's possible that the Sin player will have to roll a die. And if he rolls a poor number, he actually will have to start going to war with people. And if he does that, players are going to start kicking him off the planets and whatnot. If not, it can go to fourth and fifth and sixth turn. The only other way is if a player... Uh, happens to gain the, one of the victory conditions, which is to take control, have your own lo your own base and your moon, and then take control of another player's base or moon. Uh, for uh, and, and as soon as that happens, that's when the sim player instantly goes to war. 
But another interesting thing here is in order to win the game, you'll have to have that space for an entire round, which is actually more challenging than you think. Just getting one space on a player's home world is very, very difficult, but that's what it takes to win the game over battle, the all war. Battles take place on this board here and on the uh, map below, and certain units will tell you which uh, which ones are going to be utilizing this thing here. This one here is the destroyer, and it'll tell you it utilizes this, although it's very simple. When you attack with a unit, you're going to be simply rolling a die and hopefully getting that number or lower. So this carrier needs a four or lower to do a damage. And um, okay, and the bomber here, it needs a uh, two or lower for a defense uh, or eight and eight for doing attacks. So it's pretty cool because there's, I think they're like 12 sided dies. Yeah, they're 12 sided dies over there. And uh, the higher the number, the easier it is likely that you're going to be able to roll an attack. A single damage is a damage. It does it to any unit. It doesn't matter. You get to choose the unit when you take, if you have, three of these units and one of these guys here you take a damage you can choose any of these guys to go and they're actually placed on the board for combat and whatnot and if both players will have the chance to go back and forth with each other then they can choose to run away one of them or continue battling and it can go on like that very, very simple how combat actually works in this game and uh, that's pretty much it there's a couple little interesting caveats as far as the fact that there are shield tokens that are going to go down here for each of the starting players every player is going to get one of their soldiers on their planet as well as uh, one over here on their moon and then they're going to get a generator and one of these ion cannons additionally these tokens here now there's a certain rule about about ships so for instance let's say we have there's eight of these guys here and these guys are looks like oh what are they they look like they're which of them maybe not on this side maybe on the other side I don't know, they're on here somewhere, but there's only eight of them. Oh, they're the destroyers. There's eight of them. So you can have as many units as you want of destroyers, and you're going to be utilizing these tokens. There's ones and five counts, but you can only have a certain amount of fleets. So you can only have eight fleets of these guys here. So you'll be utilizing tokens underneath them to represent more units if you need to. The final thing down here is just shields, and that's pretty much the game. Uh, players are just going to be going around in circles up until the point the Sin player is no longer the passive a uh, nice refugee and turns uh, turns against everybody and tries to take over the world based on the fact that he's he's everywhere, right? And players have to constantly watch out for that player as he does certain things around the game board, trying to help as best as possible. And because like I said before, he cannot die up until the point where war starts. He basically, where he's outed, right? And at that point, that's when his characters die. Otherwise, you're simply going to, if he has some of his fleets, for instance, working in tandem with you. So he's got maybe, I don't know, let's find something useful here. He's got one of these guys here out here. And, uh, you got this here and then the yellow player comes and destroys you here and now the yellow player is here He actually will take the sin player and he can move the character along with him now sin can kind of move away and whatnot But they can't initiate combat with anybody. They only can help in certain ways There's also the commanders that the sin starts with and those commanders will give you bonuses to rolls and whatnot But if they die they're out other players will be able to get commanders But they have to actually work for it. the sin just gets to kind of start with it and that that's it. That's how you play Over Battle of the All War. There's a ton of stuff I know, but it's actually not as complicated as it seems, I suppose. I was able to explain it to you after uh, going through only playing it twice. I played it two times, once when it came here, and once live on a full live stream with Rob, uh, the player of the creator of the game. So hopefully I was able to give you enough information to decide whether or not you want to pick up this game. And now let me tell you what I think about it. So. A little bit of caveats before we get into my review of the game. The first thing is, uh, in this game, the Sin player does get a turn. I don't know if I made that clear enough. And after everybody takes their turn, the initiative is always going to be last for the Sin player, but he does get to take his turn. That's when he's basically going to be placing down units and doing non-combat movement. He's also able to move away from fleets and go join other fleets and whatnot. And he doesn't attack, but he also doesn't get attacked either. The only time that changes is when he comes out. At that point, he then also rolls initiative just like anybody else, and he plays just like anybody else as well. So he's kind of a hidden style faction in the game, which gives it an interesting little twist. Uh, hopefully that was enough information for you in the game. As you can see, there is a ton of components. This is actually all a prototype, and it looks uh, magnificent. I am not a war gamer per se. I do not play war games very often, so take this with however you'd like it, I suppose. But I really, really, really enjoyed this game. I played with Callie, I played with Ferdinand the Cardboard Stacker, and of course I played with the creator of the game. We came and he set it all up and he explained it to us. And after that, 
I, we jumped back into another game much later, a couple months later, and I was able to remember most of the rules fairly quickly, and not only that, but give you this video shortly, quickly, right after, shortly, uh, soon, right after that. So hopefully that tells you how simple the game actually is. For a game that looks very big and very, very intimidating, it's not as intimidating as you would actually think. All of these explanations are very nice, these combat specs and whatnot, and then of course it has some really nice, uh, really nice illustrations and whatnot. I'll be very interested to see what the game looks like when it's fully completed. Uh, it has nice dice trays, these these things, I mean, all the components are great. All of the uh, printed out miniatures are very nice as well. You will have uh, some really cool little miniatures. So if you like war games and you like miniatures, this is a, a straight up pickup for me. Like. I really, really enjoyed this game. We played for three hours on a live stream. You can actually go ahead and watch us play on a live stream, and you'll see we only got through half of the game, and that is because we were learning it, and we were very, very new to war games, but it didn't feel like it was that long for me. Uh, when we're like, oh wow, it's getting really late, and it's, I'm, I'm, you know, people are getting tired, uh, the stream's gonna end soon, I'm like, oh, it's really? It's already over? Dang it! That's I was just about to explode. I was the sim player, right? And I really like The Sim. I think that it's a very interesting, unique twist. I played a couple other war games, and I think it's nice when you add extra things in the game that make it change. Not only that, but this game has a lot of story quirks to it, which is really fun. In the rulebook, it explains the story of the game, and it goes through the rules with the story, so it's a lot of embedded, secret little interesting nuggets you can take place in, that uh, you, can, you can take a look at. Uh, Easter eggs, as one people, some people may call. In fact, in the dark space, in, in the dark space from the Hubble telescope, it's this map is that, but it's looking in as if the aliens were looking at us, which is really, really weird, but really, really cool. Um, the game is long, though. It's a very lengthy game, and it's still a war game. Players who do not like long games are not going to like this game. It is it's exceptionally lengthy. I would say it's probably about an hour per player, that, and the, provided they understand it and know the rules. Uh, there's a couple little things I didn't explain as for how placement works and how movement works. Certain things about how the fact that the planets have an orbit and if they're connected with each, with moons and whatnot, it's it's free movement to go across them because the way the orbit moves them. And really cool. Just like thematically works with the game, integrated in as a mechanic, super solid. Adding commanders gives you bonuses and whatnot because they're able to lead your armies better. I just love the story attachment to this game, and everybody who was playing also felt that story element. Uh, for me, this is an instant pickup for any of you guys who are into war games. Also, those of you who are just wanting to get started into a war game, and you want something that's not overly complex or overly, like, over the top or whatever, but something that's still got a lot of meat on it, a lot of strategy, and a lot of replayability. This game is always going to be different because you're always going to be able to play some more different areas. And then, of course, the components and quality are excellent. Very, very excited to see what they do from here on out. I'll be watching the Kickstarter stream very, very closely. I do like the uh, three tiered battle system, I think that's super cool as well, how the units are using that. Over Battle, the All War. Definitely something I recommend, definitely something I think you should check out, as long as you don't mind a long game with a lot of strategic aspects and uh, a little bit of, you'll have to be warm up and jump in, you know, and warm, warm up before you start jumping into the game to realize how it plays. It takes maybe one or two turns of the game before you really understand what you're doing for the first game, but after that, solid and easy. Anyway. That's what I got. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it, as well as pushing that little bell button wherever the heck it is. It'll let you know, it'll notify you to let you know when more of my videos come out. If you're interested in Kickstarter content or released, um, retail release games, do, do it. Go ahead and do so. We also do some product reviews and other cool little walkthroughs and stuff on time to time. Uh, as well as checking our website, unfilteredgamer.com. we got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Right now we're giving away a couple games still. Uh, you can still go ahead and pick up uh, Wingspan, and a couple of them have ended, so you can go ahead and check and see if you've won the games. Looking forward to sending those out very, very shortly to you. Uh, also, check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek, two great sites that do tons of great work and a ton of giveaways for you guys, even more than my own site. Thank you guys so much, and... I love you. I appreciate it, and I look forward to over-battling the All-War with you next time.